In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I harmonize trumpets within one octave, and we're gonna discuss tessitura. My name's Elliot Deutsch. I'm a composer and arranger from Los Angeles. I, my bio is in the description, <laughs> short bio. I've been doing a lot of tutorials like this. If you enjoy them, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Hit subscribe, man, hit subscribe. <laughs> then also check out my Patreon. Think about pledging a few dollars. Uh, I, <laughs> YouTube pays like garbage. <laughs> Patreon has my back. So check out Patreon and help me out. So I've been voicing trumpets within one octave since I was taught how to write for big band. And I never really thought about why it works, but I know that it does. So let me give you a little bit of background. So I'm a trumpeter. <laughs> I'm known best as an arranger and composer these days, but I'm also a, pro a professional trumpeter. And more often than not, in Los Angeles, <laughs> I end up playing third or fourth trumpet in a lot of the bands that I go play in. We have an incredible talent pool here of, you know, incredible lead players, and if I have the choice, I'll sit on one of the lower chairs. Now, this makes it painfully obvious why we don't spread trumpets further than an octave. So I'm gonna get into that right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. The reason we don't is tessitura. Now, you might be saying, I spent all this time learning how to do drop two and drop two, drop four, and I wanna do that to the trumpet section. Now, <laughs> someone much greater than me, I think it was Mozart, said, if it sounds good, it is good. <laughs> I don't think that was Mozart. Uh, I don't know, Duke or Miles or somebody said that. Something like that. And it's very true. It's a, you know, sort of a, a dumb adage, but it's very true. If it sounds good, it is good. And spreading trumpets more than an octave does not sound good. So let me explain. It has to do with tessitura. So tessitura is what we call, you know, kind of... It's used to describe vocal range as you know, the range that you have to sing in this particular piece. But when we're talking about brass and wind instruments, we're talking about uh, the characteristics of different parts of their range. So the high tessitura, middle, low, they all have different characteristics and they should be used with this in mind. For trumpets, when they're playing up at the top of the staff, <laughs> they, this is an effect that we use. In order to play those notes, you have to play incredibly loud. The, the musicians have to play really loud and it gets a really bright, edgy sound that cuts through all the other instruments in the jazz band. And when the trumpets are harmonized, you want the sound of four trumpets doing that. Now, the tessituras on trumpet aren't a full octave. So if you have first trumpet written on a D above the staff, that's a pretty high note. They're gonna be in their highest tessitura and it's going to sound bright and shrill and amazing. Fourth trumpet is probably gonna be playing a D in the staff, which is in the low, comfortable range of trumpet. Now, they're able to play with enough volume to balance first trumpet at that level, but any lower, and they might as well not be playing at all, their sound will get buried uh, underneath first trumpet, as opposed to adding to the timbre of the band. Well, why did I learn drop two and drop four and all that stuff if I can't use it when I'm orchestrating the band? And that's just not true. It's only in the case of the trumpet section that you can't use it. Trombones can spread quite a bit more and sa the saxophone section can spread the most. And in order to really understand that, we have to take a look at the makeup of the saxophone section. The saxophone section has three different distinct instruments and that's not an accident. So they've got alto sax, tenor sax, and baritone sax and they each have their own ranges and tessituras. I'm gonna show it on screen so you can really see where the range is. So you can mix high tessitura and mid tessitura and have it sound appropriate. Um, and you know, the saxophones are a bit more flexible in terms of uh, the way they can play. Barry sax can really, really honk out the very lowest notes in a way that balances an alto sax that's playing in a, high shrill range, which allows you to write these humongous spreads in the sax section. And that doesn't work in the trumpet section. <laughs> Remember the makeup of the jazz band isn't arbitrary. We have four trumpets and four trombones and five saxophones for a reason. <laughs> um, and the way I see it is because of tessitura. So when you've got trumpet playing at the high range, sort of at the lower part of the high range even, um, 
say trumpets on a high C, so uh, concert B flat. When you, vo- when you voice the trumpets vertically with an octave, um, you end up with a concert B flat in fourth trumpet and high B flat on first trumpet. And then the very next pitch below that is gonna be first trombone, which will put them in the top of their range, right? So you have first trumpet in the top of their range, first trombone's also gonna end up in the top of their range. A notice trombone, you generally don't write above an A, maybe a B flat once in a while, and that's as high as you write. So, I mean, that's really close to where our fourth trumpet's going to be. So chances are your, four, your, your first trombone's really gonna be a G or an A or somewhere in there. Um, and then you can spread the trombones as much as you want. I tend to write my trombones in closed voicing, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. You, a lot of writers much greater than me have spread out their trombones quite a bit, and trombone can handle it. It has a much bigger usable range than trumpet does. And so at that point, you can spread it as much as you want. The reason we have four trumpets and not six trumpets is because if we had six trumpets, you could have, you know, first trumpet on the top, closed voicing, fifth trumpet's playing the octave, which is generally what you do with five trumpets, and then the sixth trumpet would be playing less than an octave, and that would put first trombone either doubling something the trumpets are already doing, which is hashtag unnecessary, <laughs> or they'll just be lower than you really want them to be. Without getting cute with it, just put the trombone, just put the trumpets in closed voicing when you're uh, doing a vertical voicing like that. <laughs> and don't forget, uh, I've already done a lesson on saxophone voicing. Notice I called it sax voicings and not spread voicing. Very specifically, all of these techniques that are presented in the video, which will be right here. Am I pointing to it? Yeah, I am. Look at that. Which will be right here. Um, our first saxophone section. And I, I really recommend that you become a master of all of these, but then don't use them when you're voicing the trumpet section. <laughs> all right, that's it for now. Again, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.